Okay, we got a game. We are playing against Binny, 2152. All right, a d4, d5. Let's play the knight to f3. Knight f6, okay. Um, I'm going to play c4. And we'll see if we get a Catalan or something else. So we get a Slav, okay. I'll bring my other knight out. I was just saying earlier how... I probably need to touch up on these lines. Okay, e6. Um, I'm just going to go g3. And play bishop to g2. And we're just going to play a normal Catalan-like position. Castles. Um, my opponent might play for b5. Okay. He doesn't for the moment. I'm thinking of playing for e4 myself. Going for e5. Maybe even a4, I'm thinking about, with the idea of e3, queen e2, something like this, uh, just to try and regain the, the c4 pawn if it's necessary. I think a4 seems like a pretty reasonable move, because I stop b5, uh, and it becomes harder for black to defend this pawn. For example, if knight b6 down the road, I'll have a5 as well, which is another uh, another added benefit. So now I'm considering e4 and e3. Not sure whether to push my pawn one or two squares here. Uh, e3 looks like the more sensible move. So I'm just going to play it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a a5 here. But I think I'll continue with queen to e2 nonetheless. Okay, so we see this knight d5 move. Uh, and... I'm thinking about how I want to react to this. I think I want to play this anyways. Maybe I want to go knight to e5. That way that that way there is no b5 in any position. That's a pretty tempting option. I think I'm going to go for it. This position is a bit unusual, but knight e5 is a thematic idea. And basically I'm playing against this bad bishop on c8. Although my bishop on c1 isn't such a gem either. So it's kind of like a battle of one bad bishop against another. But we are picking up our pawn. We're getting our pawn back, it looks like. Maybe queen a5. Okay, knight d5 is tried. I'm thinking now I want to go for this bishop to d2. Uh, because my bishop isn't really going anywhere else. So might as well put it to work on d2. If I go queen c2, queen a5, okay, another viable option. Um, I am leaning towards this bishop d2 though, just because I will be able to play a4 in the future, my bishop isn't stuck on d2, and by keeping my queen on d1, I retain the possibility of coming out in this direction as well. So b5, and my opponent basically saying you can have this pawn because I value this pawn more, which is a bit surprising to me. Um, so I'll, I'll take him up on it. I'll take this c6 pawn. Uh, I guess queen b6 is the idea. But I'm not entirely convinced by this. It seems as though my opponent is allowing too much danger here. So, for example, queen to b6... Maybe I take, take back, uh, I can always take this, okay, so he, he goes queen d7, which allows me to take this pawn, so is that his intent? Uh, I'm not sure, I, I think I'm getting away with, with something here by being able to take this, and I have my eye on this bishop as well. Okay, so he goes castles. Now I'll consider e4. I'll also consider a queen to e2 hitting against this c4 pawn. Another tempting option. Uh, I am tempted to go queen to e2 just because this c4 pawn is looking a bit weak. And I think I can target it. If knight to b6, I have knight takes e7 with a discovery against the rook. Okay, so I'm allowed to play it. I also have knight to e5 with a similar discovered attack. 
but I think I'm just going to trade because it liquidates, and then I'm going to go ahead and take this rook. Um, okay, I'll take the rook. Now, it does uh, have one drawback in that I'm weakening these light squares, but a huge plus is I am winning, winning an exchange. And now I'm going to try and come around. Possibly it was better for me to just take this guy. Uh, I'm thinking about that now. Okay. So he goes queen to c7. Good move, just defending this pawn. If I go up, he goes here. So, okay, I'll just go bishop to a3. Plant my bishop here on c5. And see what my opponent has planned. I'm guessing rook to d8. Okay, rook to d8 is played. And I want to play this bishop to c5 move because now I'm cutting off the connection between this queen and this pawn. And I was attacking this a7 pawn, so knight to b6 is the only move. And now I'm thinking about just ganging up on this pawn right here. So something like rook to a3, rook to a1, and try to take this guy. That's my plan. So if I go rook a3 here, is rook a3 any better than rook a2? Uh, okay, I don't see any real difference, so I'm just going to go rook to a2. See if I can double over here and target this a7 pawn. And if, if I'm able to successfully target this pawn, I think that'll be a, a little victory. And what is chess if not just a series of little victories? Okay, my opponent plays this uh, queen d7 move. Now I can consider take, take, and take. This just picks up a pawn. Uh, not so bad. I, I think that seems like a pretty reasonable option. I don't see anything that is so much better, so I'll just go for it takes takes and I'm thinking about taking this pawn right here if bishop to b7 this is threatened but I have rook to a7 which I think is a little bit sneaky uh, just pinning the bishop against the queen okay rook to c8 that's a good move uh, so rook c8 is a good move I have to move my queen somewhere I don't want to move it off the protection of this d5 square because uh, black is eyeing that one so I'm thinking about going to b3 surprisingly my my opponent hasn't used like any time on the clock so I'm really the one who has to prove something here uh, with with the time that I have left so I can go I can go like rook to a1 and I am up in exchange and a pawn here or actually in exchange and two pawns so I could give back the exchange if I need to but I just don't need to do that yet uh, I can try pushing c4 c5 at some point and yeah it is comforting to know that I am still winning after giving up the exchange uh, because this bishop can be extremely powerful over here so it might be something I consider in the near future. Now, I'm thinking about this c4 move. I don't think my opponent has anything too great right now, so I might go c4, rook c1, sack the exchange, and play c5. This is my tentative plan. Uh, I, think, I think sacking the exchange is just not a problem, so I'm going to go rook to c1. If queen to b8, I will strongly consider taking this. Okay, so I can take, take, go c5, and if take, take, I have two connected passers, that's going to be pretty tough to stop. Um, if I come back with the rook, the queen comes out here. Huh. Yeah, I, I'm not keen on allowing counterplay, but I don't see too much counterplay for my opponent. Uh then again, I, I just don't want to allow it, so I think this is a pretty safe way to go. Uh, unless I see anything very convincing that, that would tell me otherwise, but I think I can get away with sacking the exchange and going c5. Takes, takes, and 
if he if he takes and gives me these pass pawns, I think he's in a bit of trouble. Um, I'm going to try and use these pass pawns to push forward. As Yasser Sarawan says, push him, baby. So I can go c6. And I can give this little check, probably. Queen to c5 is coming. Okay, so he goes king here. Now, I think I can do this. If I go here, here, takes... No, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, do, do, do. So here, here, takes, takes, king up, here, king up, here. So I keep pushing the pawns, and then I push the pawn again, and that's decisive. So I think I can get away with this queen trade, queen to c5. And if he takes, I believe he's losing to b6. So I'm going to hope that my calculation is correct here. I still have 3 minutes and 17 seconds to figure it out if I need to, but I'm pretty confident in this. Uh, if king d6, I can go pawn to b7. And if the rook moves, I go pawn to c7. So I'm, I'm fairly certain about this. And fairly certain is just what you say when you're when you're trying to be nice, but <laughs> I I think I do have this c7 c8, and we should be good to go. So that's a that was a good game, a nice little little Slav Catalan sort of position where Black tried to hold on to the pawn but wasn't able to, and then just had a slightly worse position. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. Let's see what my opponent does, though. I don't think there's anything, but let's see how he tries to prove me wrong. So rook b8, I go c7. If he takes my rook, I take his rook. Okay, so we get a resignation, and he wants a rematch, but my opponent is a little bit lower rated, so we, m we might play a different person. Yeah, I guess this was just a slav that went wrong. So we get this position, knight e5 wins back the pawn, and my opponent unfortunately chooses to give the c6 pawn, which was not a very good choice because I ended up winning a pawn and then an exchange, and it just got a little bit ugly for, for my opponent. So I think that was a pretty good game. Let's try to jump back into the 10-minute pool.